Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We are officially in the second half of the in 2022. And we've got some interesting matchups, a couple of big races, not big fields, but, you know, some interesting matchups. Yeah, well, my daughter, Kendra, you know Kendra, Matt, her, her birthday is July 1. So, yes, that is the second half. And her birthday is tomorrow, Friday, July 1. And we're going to talk about races that are Saturday, July 2 here, Matt. I think the Foster came up really good, personally. It's a nice car to Churchill Downs. Churchill Downs doesn't have turf which gets under my uh, uh, skin just a little bit because, of course, uh, what happened to Arlington Park and Churchill's yeah. uh, part of that. And now the turf course is ready and all those big races at Arlington have, has nowhere to run. But uh, anyway, the card on the dirt at Churchill is very good. And I think the Stephen Foster came up nice, Matt Shipman, because I'm looking at this seven horse field and I see six horses that I, I like as far as solid handicap horses or six horses that certainly have a shot to be in the exotics here. What do you think? Yeah, we've got some, uh, a couple of big names. We've got some familiar names. We've got some uh, horses with big earnings. We got three horses that are just the top three finish away from becoming millionaires. So, that makes it sound like a good field. Absolutely. We'll we'll start with the uh, we haven't seen a morning line for the Stephen Foster yet. We'll start with our our morning line here at Core Center, which says Olympiad should be the favorite, Matt. And and I think it's what have you done for me lately for Olympiad? Certainly a promising uh, horse uh, earlier in his career for trainer Bill Mott, who for whatever reason was not able to put it all together. He had a tough trip in the Cigar Mile last year, but he has been absolutely terrific this year. Yeah, for sure. Stringing together four wins in a row, starting with an allowance at Gulfstream Park, and then a couple of graded stakes wins at the fairgrounds, and most recently in the grade two Ali Sheba. Yeah, I think that's our cover photo, Matt. The Ali Sheba, you could see Churchill in the background there. Uh, Olympiad, um, you know, the Ali Sheba, I think it's underrated how, how good he ran because Happy Saver, I still think Happy Saver is a very good horse. And he probably showed that a little bit in the Met Mile running second to, uh, to Flightline, of course, and, and, and going right by Speaker's Corner. So, uh, that Ali Sheba was a good performance. I think he deserves to be favored. It remains to be seen here who will be the favorite because we're also talking about, the horse that got put up last year, not only the Haskell, but of course the Kentucky Derby, that's Mandaloon. Mandaloon we have as the second choice on the, on the, our odds here, Matt, the six. Mandaloon won a two from trainer Brad Cox, but Mandaloon does not have any thing resembling the record of Olympiad this year because he went overseas months ago, and of course he did not run very well in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, Brian, you know, that's we've talked about going to the Middle East, and I guess the uh, band Loon going over is an example of why you shouldn't go over. Um, it, it was a very tough field. He didn't run particularly well, whether it was the trip or the surface over there, uh, finished ninth, and now has been off for quite a, for quite a while. Um, Mandaloon, we saw back on the Kentucky Derby Trail, he threw in a clunker in the, uh, uh, at the fairgrounds in the Louisiana Derby that was a little bit of a head scratcher and hard to explain and came back and ran uh, obviously well in the Kentucky Derby. But yes, Brian, it's been a layoff this time since uh, Saudi and the Saudi Cup that makes me, you know, not sure what to do with this horse, but no doubt Brad Cox and, and all of the history surrounding Mandaloon, he's going to take a lot of action at the window. Yeah, we mentioned the Saudi Cup and we mentioned the Louisiana Derby from last year. Those are his, his only two poor races. He's been very consistent otherwise. And as you mentioned, he bounced right back 
after that bad Louisiana Derby to run big in the Kentucky Derby. He uh, He's also, as I said, from trainer Brad Cox, Matt, and, and I don't know about you, but he's become a trainer that you just feel like his horses don't really slump. They, uh, they're ready to run in big races. When they're entered in big races, they're ready to run. And I have a feeling Mandaloon at his home base at Churchill Downs working well for his return will be to some extent ready to run, but it sure looks like a tough spot to return, especially as the favorite, probably the second choice, but potentially the favorite here in this field of seven. Another interesting horse, Matt, is the New York bread. American Revolution. Uh, American Revolution was absolutely <clears throat> terrific last year in New York. I look at American Revolution's record, in fact, Matt, and I see five wins spread out all over the place in the state of New York, and he's over for three outside of New York. Uh, but he looked really good last fall, winning the Cigar Mile over horses like Olympiad. Uh, but his uh, one race this year was a, a tad disappointing, I guess, but it was after a long layoff. He came back at Churchill, clearly prepping for the Stephen Foster for trainer Todd Fletcher. And it wasn't all that bad a performance where you say, what's wrong with American Revolution? You just need to say, well, that, that should tighten them up for a bigger race here on Saturday. I would think so. And, and you mentioned his five wins, the majority of those coming against New York Bread Company, of course. But that that cigar mile victory at the end of last year was a breakthrough for him. And uh, time off over the winter, prepping for the Stephen Foster and the blame. And <clears throat> yeah, uh, the Foster, I think, has been a target. Pletcher has left uh, American revolution down at Churchill at Churchill since the blame to continue training on there maybe to you know uh, uh, have things work out a little better from what you mentioned that his wins have all been in New York his wins have been in New York but they've been at four different New York tracks interestingly so yes American Revolution. We know he can at least take to different surfaces. Watch the odd, odds board on this one, folks, because I, I, I'm interested to see what American Revolution goes off at. We have him clearly as the third choice here behind Olympiad and Mandaloon. Uh, but I could see him uh, drifting up just a little bit off that loss in the blame. And don't sleep on the blame. It might be a listed stake there at Churchill Downs. But that was a very good field. Not Stephen Foster good, but it was a good field. So his... Uh, Defeat there by three, three and a half lengths or so was not all that bad if he can move forward as we would expect mm -hmm. second time off the layoff. Uh, if he drifts up, Matt, five to one, six to one, I think he becomes a very interesting horse to play in the Stephen Foster. Another interesting horse for me, Matt, is Caddo River. And uh, maybe I'm thinking a little bit about Nick Sko and the journey Nick Sko made in his career because Nick Sko was a talented young horse, showed flashes of being a really good horse, kind of went off the boil just a little bit. Brad Cox completely turned Nick Sko around and he became a monster uh, through, of course, last year's Breeders' Cup Classic win. I, I, I'm not saying that Cattle River is going to follow in those footsteps completely, but it, it does remind me a little bit of Nick Sko in, in that Caddo River always had a lot of talent. It's been in allowance races, but but a, a, at least one or two of those allowance races were of stakes quality, and Caddo River has just been taking, uh, taking the field to the woodshed, if you will, Matt, in those races. I think Caddo River has turned a corner, making him a, an interesting horse in this seven-horse foster field agreed that he's an interesting horse he's a horse that i and and i think both of us uh have wanted to like for a long time going back to the kentucky derby trail uh last year we 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 both liked Caddo river um especially after he got his only uh stakes win which came in the smarty jones at the beginning of the derby trail in oak lawn park but uh you know he continued on the derby trail ran okay did, couldn't seem to find the winner's circle. Um, and yes, now here we are uh, uh, in 2022, uh, three very strong open length victories in allowances, two at Oak Lawn Park, one most recently at Churchill Downs. Can he make the step up? Can he become a stakes winner again, a graded stakes winner against this foster field? 
Yeah, and I think this foster field is a grade one quality, but I think Caddo River could become a grade one quality horse. Uh, that last win over the track at Churchill Downs was 133 and change. Very, very impressive for Caddo River. Another thing I like, uh, Ricardo Santana Jr. has been on him recently. It seems like those two are getting along very well. He's also been able to sit just off the pace in all three of those wins, which he looked a little bit unwilling to do early in his career. So Caddo River... Uh, drawn the rail, I'm not sure that's a good spot to stalk and pounce, but uh, he has shown the ability now to, to to at least relax a little bit early, and that might have a lot to do with his turnaround of late. I think he fits in with this bunch. Interesting, at 6-1 to one on our odds map. More interesting horses. Uh, how about number five, Go Dolphin, Proxy. Proxy's 8-1. to one. Proxy is a horse, Matt, who just hasn't broken through. He's run a lot of very good races. He continues to run good horse against good horses, and he continues to make some noise while not picking up the first place check. Yeah, that's for sure. And and you mentioned earlier, Brian, the quality of the blame, uh, the prep race for the Foster and Proxy was second in there. He was third before that in the Ben Ally, and, and before that he was second in the New Orleans Handicap. All were three three good races with good fields but yeah he just just hasn't found the winner's circle um been is he just a notch below or is he a horse that you know uh, likes to get close but not quite get his head in front at the wire yeah either way i think he's a horse that you should strongly consider for the uh, the exotics especially underneath and eight to one seems about right for proxy because, uh, as we said, there's there's at least four horses in here that should be bet below him. Another interesting horse, Matt Last Samurai. Last Samurai, you know, we've known about Last Samurai just like Cattle River for a long time. He showed some flashes here and there where oh, he could develop into a nice horse, the son of Malibu Moon, but it didn't really happen for him as a three-year-old. But I tell you what, those last two races at Oakland Park, one going long against Lone Rock, and then the Oakland Park handicap was kind of eye-opening performance there for Last Samurai, who now gets a barn switch. Yeah, that's for sure. He he uh, boosted his career earnings significantly, Brian, when he won that Oakland handicap. That was when he was in the barn of Dallas Stewart. He's been in the barn of Dallas Stewart since then. He's been in, he was in the barn of Dallas Stewart until just a few days ago, Brian, after, you know, nominations were in for the Foster, which came from Dallas Stewart, but uh, uh, Willis Horton Racing made a change. Uh, Stewart's Barn has been a little chilly since that Oak Lawn handicap, and uh, he gets moved from uh, pupil Dallas Stewart to teacher uh, D. Wayne Lucas, um, who probably handles most of Willis Horton's horses. As we remember back uh, a few years ago, uh, they partnered up when Will Take Charge went on a run late uh, to become three-year-old champion. So an interesting uh, barn change there. I don't know how it really will affect how uh, Last Samurai runs, but certainly a bit of a dramatic wrinkle. Yeah, a dramatic wrinkle. Willis Horton, as you mentioned, has uh, has history with D. Wayne Lucas. Dallas Stewart has history, a lot of history, a long history with D. Wayne Lucas as well. So probably a pretty friendly exchange there, but an interesting exchange. Maybe I'm showing my bias here because Cato River and Last Samurai have some uh, uh, similarities uh, in their careers. I've already talked about a little bit, but Cattle River is a horse I can see winning a race, and I, I call it, it's grade two, $750,000 Stephen Foster, but I've called it a grade one quality race. Cattle River is a horse I could see winning a grade one race, Matt. I'm not sure I feel the same way about Last Samurai, but I, but again, uh, that uh, especially the last performance makes you wonder if maybe Last Samurai has also turned a big corner and is ready for a field like this final horse in the in the race matt looks to be the long shot title ready he's had some good moments over the years but this looks like a tough spot i will say this though matt the the, the ralliers in the field look like mandaloon although he can show some tactical speed uh but certainly um uh title ready is going to come from off the pace and, and maybe proxy as well um could that set up well for horses who want to come off the pace in the foster I mean, I think that, you know, we've talked about uh, races like this. I think it's a race where there are horse, some horses that prefer to be uh, 
uh, up close, pressing the pace, and and then horses like you mentioned that want to come off from it, but but there's not blazing speed in there. It should be it should be the kind of field where if a horse runs his race, he's going to have the opportunity to win it. Uh, title ready, just to, you mentioned. It's been a long time since he found the winner circle, going back uh, to the Louisiana uh, handicap in 2021 yeah yeah that's that's been a long time for sure we're, we're going towards a year and a half now for title ready uh yeah i'm interested to see what happens in the first quarter mile of this race cattle river does he go to the lead from the rail how much speed does american revolution show in his second race back olympia it seems to have the exact same running style as cattle river uh liking to sit second so those first three horses in the first quarter mile uh, in in the uh starting gate here, Matt, really interests me. And I think that could go a long way in deciding how this race is run. But uh, for now, we'll uh, we'll move on to our next race. But the Stephen Foster, certainly the race of the week for me. Matt, I want to uh, remind uh, our viewers at this point, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, please do so now. Turn on those notifications. Matt Schiffman will appreciate it if you do, as will I. Matt, the other race that we want to talk about is not nearly as good a race as the Stephen Foster, not nearly as interesting a betting race. But if you're following the best horses in America, I, I think we got to look at this John A. Nehrut, a seven furlong grade two at Belmont on Dwyer Day at Belmont Park on Saturday. As an interesting matchup, at least between the top two, I guess only the top two, because I, I think the other three horses are merely filler here in the Nehrud map, but life is good. Speaker's Corner, let's go. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Only a field of five, but in that field of five, you got two horses that are in the most recent top 10 uh, in the NTRA poll. Life is good, ranked number three. Uh, Speaker's Corner, ranked number nine. Uh, uh, two very good horses that uh, both of them coming off of defeats but before that had significant winning streaks oh forget the ntra top 10 matt isn't life is good better than number three in america i i think so brian and and he was number one in america prior to that trip out to the middle east but you know as far as polls go recency and and who's been winning lately are, are certainly part of that but uh we know life is good is really is really really good having won seven out of eight races prior to that trip to middle east and let's face it brian uh, uh the 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 dubai world cup was absolutely uh to me stretching the distance limits of life is good uh trainer todd pletcher since then has said that the the track surface did not come up to uh life is good's liking they were hoping that the the track would get a little tighter on race day but it didn't right right and i i've heard the same thing my, my i i never got my shoes on that made down race course uh earlier this year but uh, i've heard that it was a slow and tiring track as well so i'm not i'm not completely sold that life is good can't handle a mile and a quarter but uh, he did come up short of course fourth not a bad fourth behind country grammar and uh, hot rod charlie the americans running one two there uh yeah life is good you mentioned eight races before the dubai world cup and they were all sensational let's let's uh let's not go uh on the hyperbole bandwagon here the, these races they were sensational I, I don't think i'm overstating how good life is good was in those eight races his only loss was a terrific performance after a layoff against uh, uh, Jackie's Warriors sprinting at Saratoga. Uh, he ended last year with a big win in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. He started this year with a big win over Nick's go in the Pegasus World Cup. He's got speed to kill. Every warning sign in the world, though, Matt, tells me a mile and a quarter, uh, what, four months ago, almost four months ago, overseas in Dubai, a tiring trip, uh, a tiring track, a mile and a quarter now coming back seven furlongs against a fast horse in Speaker's Corner. There are a lot of warning signs that maybe this heavy favorite is beatable in here. 
But then I just think of the kind of speed he has, the kind of talent he has, and I and I don't believe that he's going to fall into that trap of Dubai World Cup to a top seven for a long race. Yes, Brian, I agree with you. And and we're talking about Todd Pletcher as the trainer, and, and he's been pointing to this race. He's going to have uh, – Todd Pletcher is not the kind of guy that, you know, uh, uh, uses a race to help get a horse into shape. He's going to be ready to run for sure. Yeah, and he's he's got so much speed and a fresh uh, speed talent like Life is Good could be scary early in this – John A. Nehrud. Of course, John A. Nehrud was a great, great horseman. Todd Pletcher's on his way to becoming a legendary horseman if he's not already there. Life is good returning. We can't wait to see what Life is Good does the rest of the year, but it starts Saturday in the John A. Nehrud. Now, Speaker's Corner, Matt, you mentioned he was number nine on that NTRA poll. Number nine seems a little bit low for what he's accomplished this year, but he's coming off getting it handed to him, if you will, a little bit in the Met Mile. Yeah, well, that's for sure, Brian. He uh, he went out and set the pace in the Met Mile, but there was a horse in there called Flightline. And let's face it, Brian, at this point, I don't know if there's anybody who's going to run against a Flightline and not get his uh, butt handed to him as Speaker's Corner did. However... Is it possible, Brian, that Speaker's Corner is facing the exact same kind of scenario in here, except, uh, again, with Life is Good being a extremely talented, extremely fast horse? Uh, and honestly, Brian, I was a little surprised to see Speaker's Corner coming back this quickly off of that Met Mile in a race where he knew he was going to run into life is good. Uh, uh, Speaker's Corner um, has honestly been racing pretty much every month for about eight races. So I don't know. I have to be a little concerned that that Met Mile uh, may take a little toll on uh, Speaker's Corner, considering that he's facing a horse like life is good. I don't know. This is what horses used to do. So I'm not as concerned as you. They, they, they're they doing well and they run. And, and Speaker's Corner's coming off a four week. Uh, yeah, it was a tough race, but uh, coming off four weeks, he, he got to the lead. He controlled the early pace against Flight Line. He even uh, blocked him a little bit, if you will, early in the race. But uh, of course, he wasn't as good as Flight Line. And, and like you said, that's uh, no shame in uh, not being as good as. Uh, as flight line there in the Met Mile. But it'll be interesting as well in this race to see what happens early because Speaker's Corner had the early lead on flight line. I don't know if he gets the early lead on Life is Good. Does Life is Good go right to the lead and Speaker's Corner uh, sits uh, lapped on him on the outside? That, that would be very interesting. Or does Life is Good go right to the lead and Speaker's Corner try to sit two, three lengths off him and then try to make a move? That might be tougher. I, I I somewhat doubt that Speaker's Corner will have the lead again in this race like he did in the Met Mile. But you never know what happens in the first few jumps. A very, very interesting, almost a match race, if you will, here in, in, in the John A. Nehruud Matt, because Repo Rocks, Harvard, War Toskin, uh, War Toxin and Repo Rocks, I guess they have a little bit of speed. Harvard, not so much, but they, they just look more like allowance horses in a in a grade one type of uh, environment and that would seem awfully tough unless one of the other two does not run at all yeah that's for sure but you know one of them's likely to finish third or maybe possibly second in there uh they you know a, a couple of them have some uh graded stakes placings in uh races at aqueduct during the winter so you know it, They've been running okay, but they haven't been running against the quality of horses that Life is Good and Speaker's Corner have been facing. Matt Shipman, no truer words have ever been spoken. I, too, agree that one of those horses will finish third in the John A. Nehrud here. All right, buddy, it's time to move along. We've talked about the, a lot of the best older dirt males in the country running in either the Stephen Foster 
or the John A. Nehru Churchill Downs in Belmont Park. Uh, we also got Charge It coming back into Dwyer map. There's the Delaware Oaks as well. But these were the two we focused on, top older dirt males. Time for top picks now. Let's go to the board, Matt. Who you got? Stephen Foster, you go first. Stephen Foster, yeah, you know, <clears throat> I wanted to try and pick against Olympiad, and I considered Caddo River, and I considered American Revolution, and I considered Mandaloon, um, and, you know, I probably should have picked one of those considering that Olympiad is – is going to be the favorite. We'll see uh, how heavy a favorite he's going to be. Um, and I guess because of my lack of indecision about the other three, I ended up with Olympiad. Bill Mott, trainer, has been known to uh, have horses in a whole bunch of in a row. Yeah, absolutely. It's happened before, hasn't it? Uh, I, I'll light my cigar to that statement, Matt. Hey, Olympiad is the now horse. He's got a big win over the track. He is the horse to beat in here. But I'm going to go for a now horse who also has a win over the track because Caddo River, I think, has turned a corner. I called it a grade one quality field. I don't know if Caddo River can do it, but uh, there's going to be some odds attached to Caddo River here. And, and like I said, he, he reminds me a little bit of Nick's go in very recent history for trainer Brad Cox. I'm going to try to beat the favorites Olympiad and especially Mandaloon here in the Stephen Foster. American Revolution, I could see running a very good race, but I just don't like him to win. So I landed on Caddo River. Uh, I think that... Uh, one mile and 133. I know how good he was in Oakland before that, but that that one mile and 133 and change at uh, Churchill Downs has me convinced that Caddo River is this good and has a real shot to win the Stephen Foster. Matt, I, I'm not even sure we needed to make graphics here for the John A. Nehrud. I'm embarrassed because we are a pair of chalk-eating weasels here in the Nehrud. But on the other hand, who, who else are you going to pick? There's only two horses to really pick from in the Nehrud. We picked the better one. I don't know. Is, is, could Speaker's Corner beat him? Yeah, I guess it's possible, Brian. But you know what? He's going to be a pretty short in odds also. We're talking about two horses here that are going to be, you know, maybe three to five and six to five. So, um, you know, let, let's face it. Uh, this uh, this Nehru for me is a race to watch and enjoy. I'm probably not going to be betting. Well said. Well said. It's it's not a great betting race. It's not a good betting race. Yeah, I could see life is good at one to five. And I could see Speaker's Corner at nine to five. That's that's kind of hard to do in a race that's not a match race. So we'll see what happens. But both Matt and I like life is good's chances here in the Nehrud and then bigger, better things. He's probably pointing for the Whitney at Saratoga uh, after that. Uh, but life is good and amazing talent. Matt and I both like him. We're on the now horses with a win over the track in the Stephen Foster. Matt went Olympiad. I went Cattle River. Matt, let me get a closing shot from you, my good friends. Yeah, a couple of fun races, Brian. A couple of races to really enjoy watching some talented horses. A lot more betting possibilities in the Foster. Regardless, thanks for watching Horse Center. We appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. Uh, yeah, I'm also interested in Charge It. And again, not as a betting proposition here now on Saturday, but uh, Charge It is a horse who might really, really be a very, very talented horse for trainer Todd Fletcher. And he's in that Dwyer. So I'm interested to see what Charge It can do in the Dwyer also Saturday at Belmont. Thanks to Candace Curtis uh, for the race graphics. She always does a great job. Thanks to our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars. And most of all, thanks to all you for tuning in every week, podcast or video Horse Center. We sure do appreciate it. We'll see you next week right here. Another edition of Horse Center. See you then.